Essential Genealogist, podcast interviews with storytellers, genealogists, and podcasters. Hello, everyone. This is Coach Carol, and this is another episode of the Essential Genealogist and Storytelling podcast. And I'm so pleased today to have with me Karen Guest, who is my guest today. Hi, Karen. Hello, Carol. How are you? Thank you. I'm very well. And I'm really pleased today. My hairdresser was able to come. Yay! Um, Not that our listeners can see any difference in my haircut, but it's been a big relief for some normality coming back to my world. And for our listeners, I'll just let them know that I'm in one state of Australia and Karen is just across the border in another state. So, Karen, tell us where you are. I'm actually in Queensland at the moment, in Brisbane, and we're not in lockdown, thankfully, but I think uh, that that may happen soon. We know how that goes. It's been delightful to meet you and to have our conversations via email in the last couple of weeks. Karen is a writer, and I met Karen at one of our mentor forums with Andrew Jobling, and immediately Karen struck me as the person I wanted to interview next because of her writing and the style of her writing. So I thought it would be of interest to our listeners to have Karen come and tell us about what she does. Let's find out a little bit about Karen's background first. What would you like to share about you as a historian and writer? Oh, thank you, Carol. I'm not sure that I see myself as a historian as such. However, I do enjoy delving into the past. I will talk about the storybook I prepared for my grandparents a bit later in the program. But I wanted to tell you a bit about me um, wanting to be an archaeologist when I left school. I was told I wasn't smart enough, but, but never mind. That's not really a big issue. In terms of my background, For over 27 years, I worked as an administrator at a university and towards the end of my tenure as a tutor and elected part-time student member of the university board. Now, I have completed two undergraduate degrees and I've changed my career a couple of times. At the moment, I'm working on becoming a full-time writer, even though I am still working part-time. So in in terms of sparking my interest in what, in writing other people's stories, I've wanted to be an author for as long as I can remember. My interest goes back to when I was a teenager, when I prepared a storybook for my grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary. I think I was maybe 15 at the time. I put together a story about their life, where they married and where they lived. Where they lived was a very industrial area in 20th century England. In those days, putting a storybook together wasn't like it is now. You had to go to the library, you had to hit the encyclopedias, or rely on others to tell you stories. And print on demand wasn't an option. It was about preparing a photo book, it was about handwriting stories and using glue to stick paper to the pages. It's a bit sad for me, but that storybook that I prepared all those years ago is no longer available. Had I known then what I know now, I would have asked for it when my grandparents passed away. However, 55 years later, I'm writing a story about my mother's childhood in early 20th century England, and I'll talk more about that later. Well, that is fabulous, Karen. I'm disappointed, like you are, that that storybook is no longer available you must have put a lot of work into that and I know that telling the story is important for you and it would have been important for your grandparents at the time Mm. and you're writing now other people's stories that is a real spark that you've just indicated so you're looking into the history of ancestors recent ancestors in your family. Often many people do that. They know from firsthand interviews with them or being in their lives a lot more about their stories and they can tell them. That's right. So what prompts you now 
to come up with your next story and how have you gone about writing the story? Tell us about your new book. My new book is about my uh, mother's story. I'm currently writing my third book. It's about my mother's childhood in 20th century England and it's based in the Western Midlands. Now, at the start of the podcast, I mentioned that I prepared a storybook for my grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary. So in, in preparing for this current book, I encouraged my mother to write down as much as she could about what she remembered as a child growing up in Dudley. Dudley was the town in which she lived. Now, my mother was 13 when her parents, my grandparents, decided to emigrate to Australia in search of a better life. The focus of this book is that period before my mother immigrated here to Australia. Once I had the information from my mother, I started researching and writing chapters around the stories and the photographs that I had in order to build up a picture of her life. I'm looking forward to getting back into it and publishing the story for many reasons, but mostly because it's about my family. And this year I haven't been able to do too much on the book because of other matters, but I'm about to pick it up again. And it was recently that I met you, as you mentioned earlier, and bought your book, Storifying Your Ancestors. And this particular book, whether you know it or not, has been in, an invaluable resource for me. This is what I'm doing. I'm storifying my ancestors' story. Maybe it's just my mother, but it's also about my grandparents. So now I'm armed with a lot more resources to be able to help me work through it. So I'm very happy about that. Well, that is fabulous. What uh, was your mum's name and what were your grandparents' names? My mum was called Mary and my grandparents were Steve and Hilda, but they had different first names. They chose to go by their second names and that's something that's car carried down actually from my grandparents to my mother because <laughs> it's their second names that they went yes. by. I find that quite a lot that you'll hear from someone to say that, oh, yeah, granddad was um, Joe. We called him Grandpa Joe. He was actually christened Michael John or something completely different. Yes. <laughs> For the genealogist, just makes it a little, little bit harder to find them in the archives. It does, but it does help if you've got their original birth certificates, which I have. So it's been very useful to have that information. Oh, definitely. We can't get by without those primary documents. No. Being able to go online and to find them and order them these days makes life easier. All right. So how about the title of the book? One of the questions that you said I should ask you was, how did you come to write Barefoot to Boeing's? Why that title? Well, that's a very interesting question, even though I, I did suggest that you ask me that. My journey with Barefoot to Boeing's, it was actually born out of tragedy when a close friend was, was killed in an aviation accident in 2008. And his wife, she suffered terribly following the loss of her husband. And she brought Brian's story to my attention when she was at her worst. I pursued Brian for, for permission to tell his story although at the time his wife was very ill. Brian had compiled some memoirs for his children about his life, although I saw something else. I saw something very specific. I was fascinated by the story of a young boy who walked barefoot to school and his dream to fly. The story is really about dreams, persistence and de determination to see it through. Because I could see that story, there really wasn't any other title it could be but barefoot to Boeing's. I've never been able to explain why but I felt compelled to write his story or to share his story with others. It is a trip down memory lane from his life on the on a farm and the outside toilet or dunny is those who are old enough to know it was called. Yes the Aussie dunnies. Yep. Aussie dunny, the outside dunny to the luxuries of the jet aircraft. It's set in rural Australia, starting around the time of the Great Depression and played out until the 1970s. And really it's about a glimpse into the life of a young boy who dreamed, who dared to dream 
and to dream to fly. And he followed it through. Everything he did and said just took a lifetime to play out. The story itself is of his journey. And what age is Brian now? Is he still with us? He is still with us. He's still alive. He knows that I'm doing this podcast. Um, I did invite him to participate, but he respectfully declined. He is, is very happy for me to do this podcast in his place. It is about his life, really. He grew up in the bush. It, his earliest memories were about the fascination of anything connected to flying. And if you couldn't find Brian, his parents would often find him outside listening for the rumble of the tiger moths or hanging out with his friends who were lucky enough to own them. That sounds beautiful. I can just imagine hearing him telling you that. So I imagine you've spent a long time in talking with Brian. I have spent an incredibly long time talking with Brian, but also researching his writings that he wrote for his children and picking out what I wanted for the story that I wanted to tell about dreams and persistence and just that if anything, whatever you want, anything is possible if you just keep working towards it. Yes, you've got to find the gems within all of the data and make the story have that pivotal or focal point that you feel is of advantage to the reader tell me a little bit more about how you would research for the story itself what other things did you do I was fortunate that Brian had written some um, words for his children and that was primarily the basis of my research but I felt I still needed to go through certain things and do some fact checks on well-known events and dates and places. For the most part, he was pretty spot on. In terms of my cross-checking, I was quite comfortable with what I found. There were a few things that I needed to check, but overall it was a good process to do the additional research. And from, from doing this book and from reading your book, Storifying Your Ancestors, I have learned a lot about fact-checking and I, I look forward to researching for the future books and I'm doing that at the moment with my mother's story. Excellent. I too am doing something like that, getting ready to write my next story. And I know that research is very important. I've had others along the way helping me. How do I structure the story? Who do I turn to when I'm looking up ways of getting an intriguing story. So who's helped you along the way in in getting your stories written? Okay. In terms of Barefoot to Boeings, there have been a number of people over several years that it took to get it to publication. My biggest supporter, and still is, my partner, and he's been my inspiration and my best friend and has been incredibly patient while I've gone through the process of publishing Barefoot to Boeing's, of writing it and publishing it. There has been someone else on that journey and someone we both know, and that's Andrew Jobling. I did Andrew's writing course quite a number of years ago now, and I know without his encouragement and mentoring, it would have taken me much longer to complete, if at all. I call Andrew my personal trainer for authors. Everyone needs one. (laughs) Any author needs a personal trainer, someone to be there to, you know, bounce ideas off, to encourage you, that kind of thing. I I refer to him and others who've helped me in my journey as my mentors, because without them we, we could flounder along the way. Yes, that's right. My children and my daughter in law and her father also helped me along the way in publishing Barefoot to Boeing's. And, and there are many other people as well. And with, without that extended list of helpers, it would have been so much more difficult because you need people to read your book as well before you publish it and all that kind of thing. So there's a long list of people. And I think that's happening again, or it certainly happened with my next book. And I, I suspect it will happen with my third book as well. Just people who are there to help you are just amazing it is quite a journey for me this is quite a new environment I've been a teacher and a mentor myself a course developer and a writer but I've not got into the publishing side of things and the many many steps 
that you take between manuscript draft mm. and book in glossy print format. That's so many months and so many people involved in that. I'm learning a great deal. And I'm sure you would have done the same. Have you got any advice in that process of getting to the publishing stage? What advice would you give to other writers? Depends on the story that they want to tell. Now, I I did self-publish. I have always self-published and I'll continue to self-publish. Uh, I do everything through from obviously writing through to editing through to the actual final files and print on demand. It's not for the faint-hearted. It's, it's a big process. Generally, though, for other writers, you need to write at the very beginning you need to start with a chapter outline. That is what you want to write about with your story. And then you need to write two or three sentences about each chapter to give yourself some context. Obviously, you do your initial research and you start writing. And one thing I learned from Andrew Jobling was to write every day, even if it's just for half an hour to do some research. And I'm sure that you found that too. Absolutely. If you, if you do that, you will keep the momentum going. If you don't, you will find yourself picking up threads and going over what you last wrote about. Yes, one does need to keep focused. And having a chapter outline is very important for those who like to plot their stories. That's and right. Even, even if it's just a loose outline, it gives you a structure and helps you keep the motivation and keeps you focused in moving the story forward one step at a time. As I know one of the pieces of advice that Andrew gives is tell me what your story is about with 20 chapter headings. What are they? What's yeah. going to be in it? And that's a good way to start. So I like your advice. Mm, very much. And it's also about writing every day, as you said, to keep that momentum going. And, you know, before long, if you do that every day, you will have a story in a very short period of time. If you're looking at, say, 50,000 words and you write, say, 200 words a day, it'll take you about eight months to reach that 50,000 words. Obviously, that time frame will go down the more words you write every day. But in a way, it's like brushing your teeth. You do it every day, so you should write every day. And uh, you'll soon get to where you need to be. Well, I like that uh, analogy because it is habit forming and it's for the, the better good. How many words are in the book Barefoot to Boeing's? Do you remember? I do. There's around 80,000 words. Okay. So that would have taken you some time to write. It, it took me a long time to write because I had I stopped along the way for a couple of diff different reasons for some personal reasons I picked it back up again and then I did Andrew's course and I stopped again and Andrew got in con contact with me again that second time he got in contact with me, with me I just wrote every day I wrote for hours every day on top of my full-time job to finish it to get it to a point where I was happy with it to publish it wonderful and is Brian happy with it is Brian happy with it <laughs> say yes <laughs> He's happy with it. The, the biggest thrill for me about how happy Brian was was that he felt like a rock star. <laughs> his dream to fly and his life journey as a pilot was out there for everyone to enjoy. Brian is a true gentleman and I feel incredibly humbled that I had the opportunity to tell such an amazing story. And it, it's not just about his legacy. It's a legacy that will help me and I hope will encourage many others to follow their dreams. Excellent. I'm looking forward to dipping into that book because I think those are the sort of books that are inspirational and motivational to many of us, even though they're from the ordinary Australian bloke like Brian who has a bit of a history and he's got a story to tell. Everyone does, so I'm told. And it's important for us, the storytellers, to write their stories and put it out there. That's right. So in addition to writing the book, Barefoot to Boeings, as it turned out, I also decided to write a movie script 
with a wonderful coach in Melbourne who I met at a focus group for authors run by Andrew Jobling. There's a pattern here, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, there is. The, the journey of writing that movie script was an absolute blast and it was an amazing experience and one that I'll never forget. I'm hopeful that one day the movie script will be made into a movie and it will be up in lights at the cinema. And I can already imagine what it will be like having written a script and who will play Brian. It's already in my head, so I just <laughs> have to imagine it a little bit more. That sounds wonderful. Yes, I, I've been told that when you're doing that sort of movie script writing that you need to imagine who's going to be in the lead role, who's going to play that character. That's right. So there was another unexpected thing about writing Brian's story that I wanted to share as well, and, and that is that I have inspired others to write their own life story. And this includes an elderly woman who lived through the Battle of Britain and an air hostess who once worked with Brian. Uh, and how special is that to be able to inspire others to write about their own story is quite amazing to me. I agree with that. It's such an uplifting thing to know that the words that you've put on paper or on screen are there for others to be inspired by. Mm, that's right. And sometimes when I talk to people, they think that no one be, would be interested in their story because they're just ordinary people, as you said before. But what I see is ordinary people living extraordinary lives. And it is these stories that are not often told. And I believe that they are so important, not only for one's own family, but because they need to be told before society forgets what life used to be like. Oh, yes, indeed. So many of the younger generation does not always have a real picture of what it was like in the 1940s when it was wartime or in the 19. 60s when there was a total re-emergence of a whole different way of life and I imagine that in the future you know people looking back on what we've gone through in the 2019-2020 pandemic this is also going to be needed to be written about and there are already stories of that the experiences of people living through pandemics that are already in print and they're already being spoken about in many different webinars and podcasts across the world. This is what keeps humanity humane. We do need to remember and we need to pass that on. Otherwise, we just repeat the mistakes of the past. That's right. So, Karen, what's next for you in your writing? I know that you've got a third book. What else is on the menu for you? What else is on the menu for me? That's a good question. I've got a lot of different things uh, on the go all at once. And I think sometimes having too many things might slow me down. But in terms of what I'm doing next, post or maybe at the same time as writing about my mother's childhood, is to write another movie script about rural Australia, which I have already started. This time the book will come after the movie script because I do need to do a fair bit of research on it because I, I don't know anything about the particular topic. I've already started collecting information and um, talking to different people. I think that it will be easier to write the book if I write the movie script first. Okay, that's an interesting way to go about it. And um, one that will strike interest in many of our listeners. And I wonder if you might tell us where they can get your books. What about your website? Can you tell us what that is? Uh, yes, I can. My website is karenguest.com.au and the books that I have published so far are available on my website or they are also available on Amazon or most online book retailers. Excellent. Well, I'll pop that into the comments after this podcast is on air in the podcast.co and people will be able to go there and order from you and we'll probably look forward to hearing more about you 
So do you have a um, podcast of your own or a Facebook group or anything like that where they can reach you? I, I don't at the moment, but I'm working on that in terms of revamping uh, my website at the moment. I am planning on having a, a podcast that is a work in progress as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's just so many things we can do, but time is often the chief factor in that. And one of the things that I do frequently, as you know, is to write my blog. So the next thing for me over the next couple of days is to write my next blog post in which I will feature this podcast about you and your books, especially Barefoot to Boeing's, the story of Brian, and how this journey for you has had impact on you and what influence you'll have on other writers. That's my purpose in doing these podcasts. I think we learn so much from each other, especially when we're listening to, dare I say it, the Australian voice of the writers here in Aussie land. We're different. We do things a little bit differently. And I think our voice needs to be heard a little bit louder out there. So is there anything else you'd like to leave us with today, Karen? Yes, there is. I just wanted to say that whenever I, I talk with people that I haven't met before, I always ask about their story and how they come to do what they do. I did that most recently with my podiatrist, believe it or not, and found out some really interesting information. And it's funny, you know, I often think there's a book in that when I'm talking to people. So look out, if you find yourself talking to me, you might be the subject of my next book. <laughs> that, that is awesome. I love that. A really good piece of advice. Find out the story from those that you touch base with. Thank you so much for joining me today, Karen. It's been wonderful to listen to your journey and to hear about your book writing. And I'm so pleased that my book has helped you along the way. And I'll pop the link for Storifying Your Ancestors also into the comments below the podcast. Thank you once again, Karen. It's been lovely. Thank you, Carol. <laughs>